It's the greatest feeling in the world. And to say we really want to be as good as we can possibly be. I think success can be defined in a variety of ways, but to me it's when you set a goal and you do your very best to reach that goal. And I think that your goal should always be exceptionally high. You don't just sit there and say, gee, I want to be outstanding or I want to be great. You build a great organization one day at a time, one success upon another success. The key thing you have to remember is the word win. Set a goal and say win. And win stands for what's important now. If you set a goal and you don't ask yourself what's important now, you don't have a goal. You have a wish list. Boy, I wish this would work out. Boy, I wish I'd make a million dollars. But if you set a goal one time and then just say what's important now, it'll tell you what you have to do to make that goal become a reality. I never had a great football player that never got knocked down. But the great ones are the ones that won't stay down. I've never known anybody in any field of endeavor that didn't have to get up off the ground in order to achieve success. And I think that's one reason why people don't maintain a positive attitude. They have a tendency to look and say, gee, this went wrong and that went wrong and this isn't meant to be, and they just get discouraged. God gave us a lot of wonderful powers. He gave us the power to think, to love, to create, to imagine, to plan. The greatest power we have in this world is the power to choose. We choose whether we're going to act or procrastinate, believe or doubt, pray or curse, self or heal. We also choose whether we're going to succeed or whether we're going to fail. We choose whether we're going to be competitive or whether we're going to wallow in self-pity. When I came to the University of Notre Dame, I told our football players that we would never be successful until they refused to accept mediocrity. You can't pay people to win. You can't pay people to be outstanding. That has to be something deep down inside that says, I don't want to lose. I want to succeed. Self-image is motivation. If you can raise the self-image of people, you're going to raise their efficiency. You're going to raise their productivity. Self-image is just following three simple little rules. Rule number one is do what's right, referred to as the do right rule. You know the difference between right and wrong? Do what's right and avoid what's wrong. I think it's right to be on time. It's right to be honest. If you do what's right, you're going to like yourself deep down inside. The second rule you have is you're going to do the very best you can. I'm not going to accept mediocrity if you're capable of doing better. I think when you put your head on the pillow late at night, worn out and tired and exhausted, if you've gone the extra mile, if you have made every available effort or resource within your body to achieve excellence, you're going to like yourself and you're going to know it's just a matter of time until you achieve success. The third rule we have is so simple, and that's just treat other people as you like to be treated. It's referred to as a golden rule. If you have a group of people caring about one another, you're going to have tremendous morale. Now, I believe that self-confidence just comes from doing those three things. Those are the only three rules we have on our football team. Without having everybody carrying out their job and their assignment, we cannot enjoy success. You can't have 10 people be outstanding on one play and have one individual foul up and expect to win in the long run. Business is no different. If everybody in an organization is totally committed to excellence and refuses to accept mediocrity and understand that their job is exceptionally important, you have a chance. But you can't do it without everybody in the entire organization understand that they're an important piece to the puzzle. Let's be as good as we can possibly be and as soon as we can possibly be. And it all goes back to attitude. You can change your attitude like that. I'm turning over a new leaf today. No longer am I going to procrastinate things. No longer am I going to be intimidated. And no longer am I going to flinch. 
I don't know of anything that's more important to a group of football players in the Gwendo football game. Believing you're going to win and despite all the adversity, don't ever let the opposition think that you aren't in complete control and that you are going to win in the long run. When you have two great football teams, you've got two teams with great confidence. But somewhere along that line, during the course of the football game, somebody is going to flinch. Somebody is going to blink. Somebody is going to let the thought that they might not be successful enter their mind, and when it enters their mind, it shows in your eye. But if you don't believe that you're going to lose, then I'm going to tell you right now, that will show in everything you do. So all we say is we're going to change that attitude as soon as possible. And the sooner everybody in the organization changes that attitude, then we are going to achieve success sooner and quicker than anybody could possibly believe.